It's Louise Matanchu here from Art Collector. I'm speaking to you from Kwandamooka country in Rhythm City outside Brisbane. And I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this beautiful place, which always was, always will be Aboriginal land. I have the pleasure to be speaking to Emily Ferretti about a key work from her exhibition, Ben Elbow, which is at Melbourne Sophie Gannon Gallery from the 5th to the 23rd of April. And Emily joins me from Melbourne, Nan, via Zoom. Hi, Emily. Hey, Louise, how are you? Good, thank you. So we're here to talk specifically about a painting from the exhibition um, called Falling Tree. And I'm just going to share that. It's one of a group of seven, seven large paintings which comprise this show in Emily's usual medium of oil paint. So Emily, I wondered if you might talk to us about how this image was dreamed into being um, and the crucial role this particular work makes to the theme of the exhibition. Sure. Um, well, I wanted to show a drawing that this work came from first because I thought that might be a good starting point. Excellent. Um, there we go. So that's the drawing that I made to start this painting off. Um, just a falling tree um, and I yeah thought it'd be an interesting translation from drawing to, to painting which is the way most of my work starts from a, a simple drawing I draw a lot and then it's exciting to see how it transforms into a very large painting um, so I'll put that away and so I just thought it would be really interesting compositionally to try to do a tree falling because a lot of my work usually the tree is quite centered and um, very grounded and so I, I really wanted to see what it would be like to see it um, you know coming out of the ground or, or moving through space um, and, and how I could translate that into a very large life-size in a way tree. Um, there's the moon sort of projected in the middle there and that's um, was something I wanted to capture as well as moon or, or sun and I, I just sort of wanted that to be one of the sort of highlights as well, because um, thinking about um, sort of emotional states of mind as well, not necessarily about the tree falling, but about um, the way someone would feel internally and mm. the fall. Yeah, so I, I didn't think of it when I was painting it as anything environmental, I suppose, because you could, you could either look at it that way, um, but I was thinking of it more as yeah, sort of an emotional climate or um, the way you can feel like you're standing up quite straight and then uh, feel like you're falling like very much like that and then can get back up again. <clears throat> and that push and pull, yeah, of, 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 a, of a more emotional, psychological state, yeah. There's so much movement that obviously you see in the transition from the drawing to the painting. And there's the blue shapes around the outside of the canvas, which kind of contain the explosive energy of the tree as it plummets towards the ground. So when you're talking about the emotion, is there, you know, when I think about a tree falling, of course, there's sadness. And I guess you're mm -hmm. paralleling that to the emotional state. Is that, is that how you're yeah. feeling about the treatment? Um, yeah, because I, so I see it as I suppose in, I think in a lot of my work there's this duality, there's like a calmness within an agitation um, and then a, I suppose with this image I was thinking of, yeah, something becoming a bit untethered um, and it, and of course there's, there's death involved in this painting but at the same time I also think of it as a very optimistic painting about um, the idea that you could you can sort of get back up again mm. I didn't want it to look like it was totally had fallen quite to the ground yet and it looked sort of dead and it was still quite alive as it was coming down so yeah I, I, I was thinking about it more like that that I wanted the audience to interpret it as a, a positive image um, and with that duality of a sadness underlying it as well if you wanted to read it like that yeah, the way you've conveyed it, really, it looks like it is coming down and or up. You, you really can't tell which state it's in. Um, and it does come across as being very vibrant and full of optimism. What about the way you've applied the paint, the paint and other technical issues that might influence its meaning? Um, it's obviously a very large painting. 
so that's obviously shaped it as well. Yeah, well, it's it's nearly a square, not quite, um, which is always a challenge, and the largest painting in the show. So I, I've always used really thin, washy oil paint, which is how I've, I, I make all the work. Um, but in this, it was they're quite it's quite transparent all over, um, and I wanted there to be like a feeling of a backlit sunset or sunrise as well which is what the peach colour is mm. um, and it to look uh, magical in a way. Um, and then all the little tiny lodges of paint for me were just the representant of the life of, of the life of the tree coming down with it, but also um, the energy or the movement. And instead of doing it with lines, the way I've done in a lot of other paintings, I thought I'd do it with, just, um, with some texture. Um, and so, yeah, it was a, I suppose that was a material way to describe um, sort of transference of energy, not in a hippie way, but from my, yeah, from my hands to the, to the, to the painting and, and the energy of the tree falling at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose as well on a technical, on a technical level to ignite a quite large space without them, it was very large without much there and quite graphic. And so I had to I had to do something to um, energize the space without covering it and going overboard. Mm. So it was one of those paintings where I had to um, dance around it a bit and not um, and stop and stop before I thought I could I would do more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's got a really lovely painterly and fluid quality, um, and. It's, it does seem to have departed a long way from those interiors and formally constructed images from a few years back. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about the, that shift in your work in recent years. Um, well, I think there was a bit of a shift when I did a series of monotypes um, with one of my friends at Negative Press, Trent Walter, and I'd never done mono, monos before. And it, there was something so, spontaneous and magical about seeing the paint you know um, pushed on and then peeled back back off that was very different to the work that I was doing and it was very direct and I think when I came back to the studio after doing that whole series I felt like the older work was quite still and lacked some movement and so it sort of made me feel slightly dissatisfied with where I was at and then I pushed now into, I suppose it's uh, more, some more abstraction. So the representation abstraction um, was always there, but definitely given me um, more, yeah, excitement about pushing the abstraction in the work. And then also just pushing gesture and the idea of using line um, as movement. I, I've been thinking about that a lot. Um, and instead of sort of making a tree with the individual leaves and things like I may have done before to, to in a patterny way, I'm now thinking of them as a big shape. Um, and that's been quite challenging and exciting because it, yeah, it's just been interesting for me to, to move into that. In a way they are slightly more graphic because like the line is definitely something I've been thinking a lot more about. And um, also just thinking a lot about the edges of, of work and, and still using, like a mirror, I suppose, uh, not a mirror, like a, a window frame, even if it is scalloped, so that you get drawn into an image, even in landscape image. So I'm still sort of bringing that still life uh, scene window um, that I used to have in a lot of my work and that sort of symbolism, but definitely on a larger scale now and more sort of uh, not so intimate when it comes to the what I'm actually painting about. Yeah, or maybe they are, maybe they are, but not in a domestic way. Yeah, it's, it's more, it's become a bit broader. Mm, I do love the sense of a, a really, a, a landscape in movement that's contained by the, um, by that blue frame. It's, they're really stunning. Um, Thank you. So well, I think that's the way you see, you see it. I think that's the way you see a landscape a lot of the time too. It's always through something. So I sort of, yeah, I wanted it to be like that. Um, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> well, look, thank you so much, Emily, and I hope the show goes really well. Um, I urge you all to have a look at this exhibition if you can get there. Um, ben Elbow is a really intriguing title, which we haven't had time to talk about. You can see the show at Sophie Gannon um, physically, and if you can't, of course, it's online as well. So thank you so much, Emily. Thank you, Louise. It was lovely talking. <laughs>